Well, welcome back to our community. Susie Thomas visiting with Carol Ann Miljavik. She's the author of Oddly Enough and Oddly Enough, Three Minute Devotions. And she laughs. I'm loving this title. Carol Ann, tell me a little bit about this one. So she laughs is um, choosing faith over fear. And it really revolves around the importance of laughter. Everyone knows the scripture, she laughs about fear of the future. But uh, the reason I really wanted to put some focus on why she was laughing Hmm. and how incredibly important that is and how laughter is such a gift from God for us to be able to move through life and move through hard things. Um, My life, you know, obviously has been peppered with a lot of struggles and ups and downs. And every single hard moment, the one thing that got us through it was laughter. Mm. And I think that absolutely the world will try to take that from you. It will try to steal it from you with anger and offense. And all of the negative feelings that can easily overcome your ability to laugh. But if you fought for your ability to laugh, if you have that ability, then there's always hope for joy in your future. So you don't have to be afraid of what's to come because you know you you can laugh. Mm. Which means that when you're laughing, have you ever noticed if you're laughing in that moment while you're laughing, you're not worried. You're not upset. You are able to overcome the feelings that you're having that are hurting you for just a moment. And so I think it's incredibly important for women. It's not just for women. I I tend to speak to women. I'm very Mm -hmm. passionate about women being able to laugh and be who they are to the fullest. Um, But if you're able to do that, then you can overcome anything. Mm -hmm. There's nothing you can't overcome if you're able to laugh. And, uh, it's so interesting where laughter shows up in the Bible, and I'm tr- and I probably won't have the couple right, but it was one of those guys who tried to pass his wife off as his sister. It might have been Abraham and Sarah. <laughs> he was trying to pass his wife off as his sister, and they they got discovered. And the reason that they figured out that they were husband and wife is because they were laughing together. And I always thought, how cute is that? But right. there's something very intimate and very um, just relational about being able to really share a laugh with someone, isn't there? Mm-hmm. Oh, laughter clears your head and it clears your spirit. Mm. And, you know, have you ever noticed um, when you're really upset about something, it's easy for you to get tickled, like beyond normal level tickled? Uh, they sort of run down that same, they're parallel to each other. And there's a reason for that. It's the balance. It balances us out. And that's why I think it's such a guess. Um, When you're really scared, a lot of times, okay, so we just had Halloween. Hmm. Um, A lot of times if if you go to a haunted house or something and you're just scared silly, you laugh. Yes. Like the laughter is a way to cope with the fear or the sadness or whatever it is that you know you're feeling it, it kind of helps you take a break and gather yourself so that you can move forward it gives you your peace back and it's incredibly important to be able to tap into that because it's really easy to get swallowed up in negative feelings and the negativity that's out in the world and um, a big part of she laughs is acknowledging the fact that we all know too much we know too much about Uh, everything yeah we have too much knowledge at our fingertips with our phones and the news and just everything and i I think sometimes knowing so much all that knowledge being aware of every little thing can really rob you of your joy and your peace it's hard not to worry when you know every single little tiny bad thing that's happening everywhere around you Mm -hmm. and so um i think it's and that's one reason why i do that so many of the comedy videos online and everything is because laughter is something that um, is inc- it's just one of the most important things for me in my life to be able to hold on to. And it's completely rescued me and my whole family. Um, when we lost my niece, we, after her funeral, we played board games mm-hmm. the same day and we laughed mm-hmm. and you know, it's hard to like people might have a hard time thinking about you laughing, but we needed to, you know, we, we put ourselves in a position to laugh as much as we can. Um, when my, when I was younger and we were in poverty and all of our utilities would get cut off and we would have no water, no power. 
and we would have to, you know, use gallon buckets of water to flush the toilet. Um, we would sit in the live in the kitchen with candles lit, and we would laugh hysterically over a game of cards. Wow. And you know, it's just laughter is a light, and you need it. You need that light in your life because the world is very dark, and it's just one of the many many things we've been gifted with to be able to walk through in this world and share that. And if you can share that laughter, it's even better. It at some point we have to give ourselves permission to though because sometimes mm-hmm. it just doesn't feel right. I remember after September 11th, it took a long time for uh, uh, anyone. I mean, I'm thinking of late night comedians and mm-hmm. Saturday night live and things that are supposed to be funny um right. don't always hit that mark but didn't even feel like it was okay to laugh yet. How do we get to the point where when we've been through something very dark, very tragic, to give ourselves permission to laugh at the future, as that Proverbs 31 woman does? Well, you know, I I live by the knowledge that laughter, like there's obviously things that are really genuinely not funny that you should never say. Right. Um, but most of the time there is, some way to find something to laugh at. It doesn't have to be at something specific, but just giving yourself permission to, like, when I'm down um, or we're going through something really hard, we put ourselves in a position to laugh. So whether that means watching a really funny stand-up comedian or Mm -hmm. going to a comedy show or or turning on, you know, bloopers from America's Face Home Videos, you know, (laughs) just, just, you know, giving yourself a chance to let that chuckle undo some of the hurt mm-hmm. and, and and it will every single time and um, no matter no matter how hard people threaten to try and remove it from us um, I'll always fight for laughter mm-hmm. I think that there's a pl- time and a place for offense I think more often than not though it just sucks the joy out of everyone yeah. and um, you know when something's really funny and it's not it's not meant to be hurtful, but it's just really funny. It's okay to laugh. And that doesn't necessarily mean um, at something specifically comedy, but in life, you know, for example, if you're a worn out, stressed out mama mm-hmm. and um, you're dropping your kids off at the drop off lawn and you didn't really throw on a bra or a jacket <laughs> and it's 30 degrees outside, but then your kids drug all the trash out of the car. Now you've got to get out of the car in front of the whole school and run across the parking lot chasing that trash. In your robe. <laughs> in your robe. No, you know, just, you've got to be able to yeah. laugh because yeah. that's hysterical. Yeah. It's hilarious. And I think that when we can laugh together at things that everyone goes through, we all have awkward moments. We all have embarrassing moments. And you can either be super anxious and mortified, or you can just throw your hands up and laugh. And laughter is freedom. Mm. And if you are not free, then you are not going to feel that peace that comes in the freedom of being um, a child of God. Because that is the best part of, of being a child of God, is being free to be who you are, being free to make mistakes, being free to own it when you embarrass yourself. And I think a lot of that freedom is also in alignment with laughter. It, it's science backs this up, doesn't it? I, I'm thinking there's a <laughs> chemical that is released in our brains when we're laughing that is not released if we're laughing for the shock value. I know when something someone says something dirty or off color, that elicits shock laughter, and I've heard that that does not release that same chemical. But what you're talking about, that down-in-the-gut joy that comes bubbling up into laughter, it releases a chemical that makes us healthy. Laughter is good medicine. That's what you're talking about. You know, laughter has the ability to mend relationships. I Mm. mean, have you ever had a a friendship that was really struggling, and, and maybe you you know, had an argument and, you know, me and my best friend argue all the time. We argue hard, but we always end up in the midst of an argument, just laughing hysterically because we're just silly because we love each other and we yeah. acknowledge that. And so we laugh together and it brings us back. If me and my husband have a fight and I'm just really determined that I'm going to draw this out and be angry at him, we sit down and we watch something on TV that's funny or a, com- yeah. a comedian. Let's say a comedian starts talking about your wife slamming doors instead of talking to you. 
when she's angry, and I know I do that. So <laughs> I can't help but look over at him and just yeah. we just chuckle together. And, you know, I can't think of a single time in life where I've laughed with someone, where I've laughed and stayed mad. Oh, that's yeah. a good point. Very you know, good point. If you're laughing, you're not mad. Anymore. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, so it's not just that. You know, oh, it releases endorphins. It makes you happy. It's that it literally heals wow. your soul. It heals relationships, and it 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 mends and it helps us come together. When you're laughing together in a group as a whole, I love going to comedy shows for this reason. Every person in that room is connected, mm-hmm. and it feels good, and it's joyful. And I think that you know, it's easy to not feel that with people out yeah. in the world. It's, yeah, we get aggravated, you know, and. Um, so having those moments where you've given yourself a chance, you know, to, to experience that, I think are really important. You said something I'm not going to let get by here. I'm going to come back to this. You do comedy videos online? Yeah. How, so, how um, do we find these? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, I actually, in 2016, I was about a year after my niece passed away and I had decided that I was just going to start putting everything out there. And I'd always done, I'd always kind of been drawn to comedy. I put out a video um, of me working out and then uh, the song Salt and Peppa pushing so <laughs> comes on the radio. <laughs> so I just, you know, dropped my weights and went for it because, you know, you can't help it. And so that video ended up going viral. And, um, <laughs> Okay. naturally most embarrassing video ever <laughs> and um you know i had been feeling like god told me to speak for uh, over a year and i didn't know how that was going to happen but then about a year after she passed away that video went viral and then all of a sudden i had this platform and wow. that was in 2016 and since then it's grown to over 600,000 and i do comedy videos but i'm also very open about my faith and Really, all of that's what led to me even being able to publish the books. Mm-hmm. So uh, his plan for me was always there. I just didn't see it. I wow. didn't know what it was. And so it was a year of trusting that I could do what he said I could do, like we spoke of yeah. before I, you know, saw all of that come to fruition. So I'm so I'm very much in love yeah. with his promises and how much he will do with your life when yeah. you least expect it. And I was. Um, devastated at the time over the loss of of my niece. Our whole family was. And then, you know, it really did show that there was, there's nothing that God can't make beautiful in your life. And, you know, that was a horrific loss for us. And so much since then, out of a choice to do something good with it, has come from it. We've raised over $100,000 for St. Jude Hospital, Mm. where my niece was a patient because of the platform. So I'm you know, he took me when I was nothing, and he just, and he puts no cap. There's no cap on what he'll do with you if you let him. And um, so, yeah, I I actually felt figured that was how y'all even found me was from that. From, <laughs> from the video? <laughs> <laughs> we got a news release. Somebody was yeah. telling us about your book. So that's how I heard. This is awesome. Uh, I knew our time would go way too fast. We want to keep in touch with you. I'm sure there's more to come from you. Please let us know when that happens. Speaking with Carol Ann Miljavik, look for her online. Look for her books, oddly enough, oddly enough, the three-minute devotions that goes with it. And, uh, oh, what a delight. Carol Ann, thank you so much for joining us today on Our Community. Thank you all so much for having me.